Yeah, I'm like, all right, man. All right, buddy. I'm live. Cool. All right. We'll see you. <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up, Hobbs? What's up, Frozen? Everybody up to actually sitting at the desk opposed to using the fucking phone. Yo, yo, yo. Thanks, Dylan. Mr. Creamy. I don't know if I like that name. Just kidding. My day's going good. What's everybody up to? It's fucking raining in California, up in Orange County. Vegas, Ethan Macy, what up? Mr. Creamy, don't go to work, dude. Work's overrated. Logical caveman, what's up, dude? Simper pie. <laughs> what up, Jackson? New dog? This is actually my old dog. Uh, you can see where my other dog chewed a hole in the other one. Uh, this is my blue nose pit bull, Logan. Who is the shit? Look at his bandana. He's about 80 pounds. He's a pretty rad dog. And this is, he's like half pig and hippo. Man, he just fucking sits here. Uh, until someone walks up next to the house. Drinking beer is nice. What's up? What's up? Breathe the body. I, I was at Campos. You're going to do a meet and greet? Yes. I was actually thinking about that, man, a couple days ago. Uh, it'd be cool for, like, the SoCal area. Uh, it'd be nice, actually, if you think about that. Maybe, I don't know where we do it. And obviously, COVID and this whole damn thing's a mess, so I don't know. Maybe we'll just fucking do it and see what we're doing. Abrams tank or a Laporte tank? I don't know what a Laporte tank is, but I'm going to go with Abrams. They're pretty fucking high tech. Stephanie, thanks for subscribing. I've been to Atlanta. I've been to Hotland, man. I'm a big fan of Georgia. Big fan. Who were you with when you, I was in 11? I was uh, Lima Company 3-5, 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines. Let me, let me show you my little... Okinawa fucking tattoo. I'll show and tell. My first uh, USMC tat that's still there. Bowie's pretty big. He's he's down here too, been a lazy bum. He's about shit. I think I just weighed him. He's like 75 pounds now. What's up, dude? These two are like best friends now. It's pretty cool. George Pax, we're in here in London and latest shit. We got a Go to bed. George Patrick, what's up, buddy? Thanks for the love from uh, all the way over there. I have worked with Canadian Soft there, Danny. Uh, I have trained with them actually in uh, Camp Pendleton. We had a Canadian Soft unit come out, and we did uh, some left seat, right seat, left seat, right seat stuff. We were shooting at the uh, square bays, and uh, we had a little friendly competition with them. Us Raiders had our 1911s, and the uh, soft guys had Glock. I want to say Glock 26s or Glock 17s. I want to say they had 17s uh, with a lot more ammunition in a double stack Glock compared to our seven rounds. So, guess who did better? Uh, those guys were great, though. Dude, they were all fucking huge. Like, I'm 6'2", like 215, 220 on a good day. All these dudes were, like, fucking hockey players like six three i swear to god bigger and they had giant fucking beards and at the time we couldn't wear beards in the united states uh but overseas we did so i was jealous they showed up to camp pendleton with fucking giant beards looking like goddamn vikings have you ever worked with friends that were with portuguese soft portuguese soft no in fact i don't know if i know of anyone that's worked with portuguese at all uh I would like to learn more about Portuguese, huh? 
What does Marsoc bring to the U.S. SOCOM? Just like every other soft unit, man. Same shit. Just a different unit. John, I've watched Generation kill 15 times at least. <laughs> About to enlist in the Marine Corps this year and had no idea you were one of the main characters. Badass, man. You guys did some great work. Appreciate it, John. Uh, I had a funny story about that. I was actually in Army parachute school, airborne school, and I had some kid in my stick and my chalk. Uh, kept looking at my name tape that said my name, and he finally came up to me. And real nice kid. I forgot his name. Uh, but he was like, you the same guy? You, you a recon marine? I was like, yeah. He's like, you, uh, I'm going to get a generation kill. And he's like, yeah. He's like, man, that book got me to join the military. I'm like, well, you joined, joined the fucking Army, man. Uh, I was in the Marines. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to join the, the Marine Corps, man. He uh, he had something wrong medically, and he couldn't come in. Uh, but nonetheless, he still joined the military. So really cool kid. Thanks, Dano. You guys rock. Any chance you can take a look at the gunsmith system and escape from Tarkov? I need to fucking play Tarkov. It's been a while. Uh, it's been a while. I actually have been playing a lot of uh, Elite Dangerous, the uh, what do you call it? The fucking space game. I've also been playing a lot of Valheim, like a lot. I'm already like 100 hours of Valheim. So, yeah, big uh, big gamer. I do know Nick Kumulatos. He's an East Coast second uh, second Raider guy. I was a first, but I do know the guy. Um, we've talked off and on, but nothing, nothing in depth. He's a good dude, though. I have worked with the Army, Stephanie, many times. Star Wars or Star Trek? Ah, uh, man, that's a tough one. I grew up on both. Um, I would say Star Wars, hundred uh, percent. Star Trek's pretty dope too, but uh, I think it's more on the, the nerdy side. To be honest, was not wrong with that. Time for so I was going in the army because of because of medical bullshit. Some bitch in Met said no, even though my doctor said I was good, and even. He was shocked when I told him, that sucks, man. Keep fucking trying. Literally, keep trying. Fight that shit. Go to a different fucking maps. That sucks. Yeah, Valheim is legit. Is going recon MLS a good idea? Yeah, fuck yeah, it is. Absolutely. Any VR shooters like Pavlov or Onward? Uh, yeah, I've actually played Onward. Oh, shit. What do you guys think of this? A little nerd action, huh? So yeah, good playing it. Have I built a sniper rifle in Warzone yet? Yes, I have. SCP Overlord. We we have Dylan quite a few times. You guys should watch our uh, our reactions to that. Does Marsoc have good gear? Uh, yes, yes, we do. Are you comfortable with sharing? What was the most traumatic thing you saw while I was in the military? Uh, yeah, I'm comfortable with that. Uh, let me think about that shit. I've seen a lot of gnarly shit. Um, probably a little girl. Uh, I saw a little girl uh, who was probably four or five years old. Uh, and she is no longer with us. She was super young on it's a blown up building. She was outside on the ground holding a yellow blanket. So, uh, you know, seeing innocents get hurt is, is, uh, a byproduct of war. And that's why I think war should be avoided at all fucking costs. Um, and when it's time, it's time and there's no kissing babies and there's no political bullshit. It's time to obliterate the earth. But, uh, yeah, that was, you know, I don't really think about that often, but it was the only time I really saw a really young, beautiful girl. I mean, she was like a porcelain doll. She was like four or five, maybe six cops. Uh, so that was that was pretty shitty. What guns did you use in Marsoc? So use the uh, the M4 uh, a lot. I used the Scar Heavy. I used. Uh, Fuck, man. The 1911, Springfield 1911. I know they've moved on to Glocks. Uh, I've shot 240s. I've shot saws, parasaws. Um, 
Mark 19s, Mark 46s, Mark 48s, uh, Mark 13 sniper rifles, and 48 3s. Uh, dude, I've shot a lot of different guns. Barrett, 50 cals, you name it. So me being a, a sniper, I got to shoot that whole suite of guns, too, from EMRs to, I mean, you fucking name it. I've shot it, so... And that was my time. I've been out now for like nine years. So what they have now is quite different, I'm sure. So Nick Key, joining the Marines, infantry, what is the best advice you can give? It, is it hard to join Marstock? Uh, it is extremely hard. And isn't that a good thing? Because if it was easy, then everyone would be doing it. And I wouldn't be so cool and you guys talking to me now, right? If it was just an easy fucking thing to get into. It was, uh, it was hard. Um, yeah, I would say... If you're a young guy or gal, ditch your significant other 100%. Uh, no offense to them, but that's your time to concentrate on yourself. And it's going to suck. It's going to be hard. It's going to be super fucking lonely. And it's a good time to uh, be with your team and your platoon and your unit, no matter what MLS you choose. So I would stay single, live your life, uh, ditch your hometown girl or guy. That's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how would you describe the differences between Marsoc and SEALs? Also, is it often Marsoc gets offered a place in Delta? Um, yeah, we get a lot of Marsoc guys and recon dudes over in Delta. Um, so it is often. It's every year. Um, what's the difference between the two? I mean, not much in 2021. I think every special operations unit is doing pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, but you know, kind of textbook um, over the last 50, 40 years, you know, the seals are insane in the water. Uh, you get a lot of water polo guys. So they're just, their level in water is pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, a lot of people don't know how heavy Marsoc and the reconnaissance community is in the water too. So I'm very proud to say that we're, we're not slacking in the water either. Um, but I would say, I mean, it's the Navy. I mean, they're sailors, they're, they're water guys by trade. Um, so they, they definitely take the lead in that. Um, I've got a lot of friends that are sealed and I've seen them in the water and they're, they're fucking studs. Well, thank you, Lankovic. 10 bucks. Hey, Jason, currently joining the army here in Canada and aiming for spec, uh, operations too, but, uh, a little scared because I'm listening to 17, 25 in your experience. You think I'm too old. You are not too old. So look at every professional sport and look at, especially at the endurance athletes, 25 to like 35 is like the prime. It's when I, you get into like that, your body, you're just older. You, I mean, you think about it, 18, you were a fucking high school kid the year before. If you're a dude, your balls dropped like four years before that. Like you've been growing hair for like a couple of years, you know, you need to settle into that body. So I think 25 and up, to be honest, is even better. Uh, you're a little bit more mature uh, upstairs. Uh, you know, you're you're not a teen. Literally, you're a fucking teen at 18. So 25, I mean, that's that's a solid age. Uh, I don't think it's too young or too old at all. Uh, so appreciate that that tip there. Taking the clothes off for that. Woo! Just kidding. China man, yeah, what's up? I want to join Marsoc. That's why I was asking all the questions. Uh, dude, questions are good. There's a lot of information out there, too. I know it's rare that you actually get to talk to guys like Patrick and I, and that's kind of the beautiful thing about uh, this question and answer is you get a little bit more to know about us. Evil Frenchy, feeling cute. Might get a Jason tattoo later. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you got to put it on your left ass cheek, though. That's for sure. It's got to be my face. Ah, that's crazy. Before joining the Marines, was there any other branch you wanted to join? I actually was thinking about the Army. I went to, so I'm from Kansas. I was born in Wichita, Kansas, and uh, I went to Fort Riley, which is up by Manhattan, K-State, Purple Power. And uh, I was probably 17 or 18. I went there to scope it out and just wasn't, I wasn't feeling it at all. And uh, fast forward fucking three more years later, Three more years later, I actually joined the Marine Corps at 20 and turned 21 in boot camp, the first week of boot camp. I could have waited just like another fucking week and a half and just been a normal 21-year-old that like got laid for his 21st birthday. But I just wanted to be with a bunch of dudes and get yelled at, I guess, really bad. So if you're about to turn 21, fucking just wait. 
a couple more weeks. Thanks for answering our question. We appreciate support you, Canada Templar course. Thanks for that uh, the cash. But beyond that, we appreciate our fucking fans, and I'm not just saying that. In fact, I wanted to say that at the beginning of this, uh, it's pretty humbling to have almost eighty thousand people subscribing to Patrick and I run our fucking our sucks. Uh, you know, we're pretty normal dudes um, that did very abnormal things so i guess it kind of makes you an abnormal person at the, the back end of it so um it's, it's a very humbling experience uh i'm not an expert at this uh patrick and i, I think take pride in you know being ourselves as much as we can and keeping it real and uh not really trying to be anything else other than than us so hopefully you guys can see that uh just trying to keep it real at all times Ah, so silent drifter. Hey, Jason, planning to go into the Marines as an officer. Nice. Just wondering your thoughts around ANS. Uh, ANS is no fucking joke, man. So back when uh, I was an instructor at MARSOC for a little bit, uh, it was called ASPOC, Advanced. I don't remember what it stood for, a preparatory orientation course. <laughs> it's been that long. Uh, and that was, uh, that was a pre- it was basically a screener three weeks before uh, ANS, and even that was a haze fest. We started out with 144 people, and we whittled it down to 33. And then those 33 went to ANS, and I think it was they were in a holding tank. I think they actually might have gone with more people at ANS, another hundred total. Uh, but it's it's a fucking competition. I mean, it's a competition with yourself. It's a competition uh, against your peers but don't fuck your peers, you know, um, it's a team effort, but, uh, you know, every day is survival and your whole goal is to, to get penned. Your whole goal is to make it to the end and, uh, obtain that MOS. And you're so vested emotionally and spiritually and mentally at that point, like you don't want to fucking fail and failing is, is detrimental to your psyche. Um, and luckily I have not failed any of that shit. Um, thankfully not <laughs> Logan, he's a fucking guard dog, but he's a big, big weenie, actually. So, uh, <laughs> dude, all right. Do I miss being in the Marines? Uh, yes, I miss, I miss the dudes. I miss, uh, miss the team. But I'll miss the bullshit. You know, you get to a certain age where it's just time to get out and be a normal human being. So, I miss, uh, I miss a lot of it. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Get out of here, dude. Uh, anyone asking Marine questions, request 03 and 29 Palms. You're welcome. Exactly. So, little hidden secret, ZML. Uh, 29 Palms is the best base. It's a beautiful place. It's loaded with palm trees and pools. It's an oasis, actually. And, uh, it's a really beautiful place. So, yeah, be a Marine, be a grunt, and try to get stationed at 29 Bombs. <laughs> uh, Juan Ramirez, what's up? Do you have to do infantry school in order to become MARSOC? Uh, no. So it helps, in my opinion, to, to master the basics. Uh, you know, me started out as a grunt and then went, and went the recon route. And then into Marsoc, I had a lot of uh, boots on the ground experience before I went over that route, which really helped me out. My field craft, you know, just behind a map and a compass and behind a gun, you know, it was pretty, pretty salty at that point. You know, I had a lot of combat experience before, uh, before all that. So, but I know a couple dudes. Uh, one in particular was a before he went the recon route was a generator mechanic. Uh, 
then became a force guy, force recon, and then was Marsoc with me. He was one of the senior guys with me. His name's Joe. And he was uh, a Raider operator of the year uh, out of all the Raiders. He was the operator of the year. Uh, so just because what job you choose, it shouldn't define who you are. It's, it's the person in the uniform. So don't forget that. If you get stuck in some shitty job and you don't want to be there, there's a strong chance you can get out of it. You know, do a couple of years, three years, and then try out. So, um, yeah, I would try to go the 03 route, just right out of the gates. That's my opinion. It's like, you're going to join the Marine Corps, like, go be a Marine, go fight. You know, like, if you want to do something else, I don't know, go join the other branches. Uh, in my opinion, no offense to all my friends that aren't 03s in the Marine Corps, but I mean, being a grunt, being an 03 is the epitome of being a Marine. It's not about the fucking uniform and dress blues and kissing babies. I mean, the Marine Corps is there to fucking shoot people in the fucking face. So why would you do something else? Just saying. John K, five bucks. Any guests coming on the show soon? Uh, yes. Got a Raider buddy, two Raider guys coming on. Uh, we got a Green Beret coming. Um, we got potential big actors. Uh, Tito Ortiz, the fighter. Uh, going to have him on the show. Um, trying to work out the details with that. I'm actually going to see him tomorrow. Um, so hopefully we get him on the show. He's a big, Tito Ortiz is actually a big Call of Duty guy. So I played Call of Duty with him a bit, really shortly, sadly, I believe. Uh, but he's a big gamer. So it's pretty cool to have a big uh, public figure like him. Uh, it's all about Call of Duty. Uh, 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 I did not personally work with PJs. I know Patrick did. Uh, but I have a lot of friends that were Navy Corman Sarks that went over to the PJ route. And in the medical realm of the the military, you know, the Air Force PJs is where it's at. Um, those guys are fucking shit hot. So hats off to those dudes. What if the Spec Ops guys from Gameology get on Savage Actual? <laughs> I mean, I yeah, I have yet to watch those dudes. I think one dude's named Cameron, I think. Um, I'm all about hanging out with brothers from other branches, so I'm all about it. Long shot, but do you know anybody from the 216 Rangers at Fort Riley? I don't know anyone there. Uh, I don't. And I am a Kansas person, so uh, I don't, though. I have worked with, no, I have not worked with actually Navy EOD. I've worked with a lot of Marine EOD, uh, but have personally not. I'm friends with a couple of guys that are EOD, like Bassier, my Russian brother. Uh, but I don't, I have not worked with any of them real world. Do you, Nick, the other Marine Raider, do I know? Yes. Uh, what's the most elite U U.S. spec ops, in, in your opinion, the most elite spec ops unit? Uh, I would say SEAL Team 6 and uh, Delta Force, 100%. Uh, I think they're both pretty fucking equal. Um, yeah, they're the best. And someone's fucking calling me right now. Uh... Is it possible to enlist with a recon contract? You need to uh, you need to call your recruiter, man. I don't I don't know. It changes fucking quarterly. It changes yearly. So you need to call and find out. Frog it would be cool if you went on Vigilance Elite. I don't know what that is, my friend. I don't know what that is. I'll have to look that up. Kaho, Samson, Lee, uh, have you ever worked with SEAL Team? Uh, yes, I have. How many special forces bases in Virginia? <laughs> what do you like to know? Have I ever seen a building go boom? I've seen many buildings go boom. Yes. Ryan Buckley, five bucks. Why is Patrick's mic always quieter than yours in the videos? Is it because you're secret al secretly alpha? <laughs> and also your tattoos are so sick, you should do a showing. Ah, you guys want to know about the tattoos. So I got the... The Raider tat here just says, uh, today is a gift. 
I got it when I got back from Fallujah in Iraq in 2004. Uh, what, what time am I at right now? 20, I got five minutes left. Um, yeah, I didn't think I was going to live through Fallujah in 04. And to myself, in my head, I was like, dude, if I make it back home, because I'm pretty sure I was going to die. But made it back home every day after that's going to be a gift. And this is part of a quote today's history or yesterday's history, tomorrow's a mystery, today's a gift. Um, so I always thought that was pretty dope. Uh, Polynesian tat, I know I'm a white guy, but I love the island life. I'm a big time uh, bodyboarder. Um, so I love the ocean. I got spoiled living out here in California. So I fish a lot. Um, so this tells a story. Uh, so everything on here has meaning. And I got it in uh, San Diego at Island Tat by a dude named Suni and another guy named Josh who owns the place. So amazing dudes. Um, more tattoos. Uh, Buddhist tattoo. I got a Raider Recon here with a little sniper uh, tribute. Uh, I actually got this at 18 in Kansas. Uh, this says warrior in Chinese. I'm that white guy with a fucking Chinese tat. So I got a lot of tattoos. And then the head tat, the Viking tat, and I'm not done. I've got this knee tat. This thing's pretty. I think this is like one of my fucking favorites. It's, uh, it's a shark's mouth with a, it's not a butthole. It's not a horizontal fucking butthole on my knee. It's a fucking octopus. So octopus eye. <laughs> you see great white sharks. I've seen four. I've been bumped in my kayak, almost knocked over fishing uh, for yellowtail in La Jolla. Uh, I had another one at a reef in La Jolla swim right under fucking eat me um, with another buddy. And it was the first time I ever met the dude. And we're now like really good fucking friends. Uh, his name's Ricky. Shout out to Ricky in Indonesia. He's been out in Indo for like eight years. When will the beard come back? I just shaved this fucking shit like, uh, like last week. So, dude, I'll grow it out for another two months and I'll just get random and fucking shave it. Are you and Patrick going to do conventions across the U.S. when they start up again? One here in Dallas in October. That is the fucking goal. Uh, that is the goal. So little inside scoop, Patrick and I are working on a video game and I can't tell you on what platform, but it is a shooter. And, uh, Patrick and I are one of three military advisors for the fucking game. And we're actually going to be characters in the game. So, uh, can't really say what game that is what platform when it comes out, but we're fucking behind the scenes doing some cool shit. So, so with that the reason I'm saying that is, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of conventions, uh, it, even outside of that, like we want to go to the cons. We want to go to the bliss cons, the comic cons and represent Savage Actual. And I mean, it's a fucking gaming convention. Like who doesn't want to do that? You know, get a fucking booth and a mic and get Kelso and Patrick and go hang out. And I do want to travel the country more too. So, and, would be cool to do meet and greets, you know, as long as you motherfuckers don't like bring a gun or a fucking knife and like try to kill us. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm kidding, but not kidding. Six days in Fallujah. Mm-mm. It is not six days in Fallujah, or is it? you still wake up at five and work out? Or are you done with all that? Uh, dude, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning last night. I took a melatonin at like fucking midnight and I woke up at three. Uh, it fucking sucked. So I do wake up pretty early um, now. Um, I'm up at like six and I try to hit the gym at seven. So I'm actually going to school right now to be a personal trainer on the side uh, and really just to learn more about fitness uh, from a biomechanical uh you know from that aspect from the, the body aspect how to prolong my life in a healthy way so yeah and i also do want to help people uh can i can you tell us a short funny story bro a short funny story uh fuck yeah i got a funny fucking story and i don't know if i fucking said this before but uh so in the Marine Corps, we have to take your analysis. We got to take piss tests all the fucking time. And at first recon battalion back at that time, someone popped for something. Uh, I think multiple people popped actually. So it was a company wide and a company you have 
like 60 to like 90 dudes. It kind of depends on what unit. You got a bunch of dudes. And it's a company-wide fucking piss test. And uh, they had us all together. We couldn't leave. And I was just a corporal. I was an E4. Um, so we were like stuck in this like squad bay. And uh, I was fucking cleaning out my wallet. And we've been sitting there all fucking day. And it's literally one by one. We're going in there to take a pee. And they're fucking watching us do it. I was cleaning out my wallet and uh, I found a condom in my fucking wallet. And uh, I was like, and it looked like the first prototype to a condom, like that was invented in like the 1600s. Like this thing was old and crinkly. So <laughs> I got this idea because I'm a jokester to fuck with the guy that's watching me pee. So I got all the dudes together. And at this time, being homosexual in the Marine Corps was like, or the military in general was like, you're getting kicked the fuck out. And I'm not homosexual. But the point of the story is, so I got this little fucking waiver and witnesses. I'm like, I, Corporal Lily, am not a homosexual. This is a joke. I'm going to resurge fucking Cesario. And I signed and dated it, had a couple witnesses. So when it was my time, I fucking opened this condom and I wedged up my ass crack. And I went in there in my uniform and got in front of this fucking toilet. And he's a big Samoan dude named uh, Justin. Fuck, he's a federal police officer now in San Diego. I forgot his last name. Uh, Cesario, I know it now. <laughs> my, he, was, he had a hard time saying my last name. He's like, oh, what's up, Corporal Yee? -Yee? I was like, man, I got fucked up last night. I went to a party at San Diego State, and uh, I fucking woke up in my car. I don't remember shit. And he's like, yeah, yeah. So I went in there, and instead of just, like, fucking pulling my pants down just a little bit to go pee, I fucking pulled my pants, like, all the way down. I, like, all the way down to the ground, and, like, hung my ass out. And there's a fucking flying fucking condom in the wind hanging out of my ass. <laughs> ah! And he just starts fucking making all kinds of noises. He's like, oh, oh, Corporal Yuji. He's like, you got a Jua, uh, Big Samoan dude. He's like, you got a condom hanging out of your ass. And I'm like, oh, what? No fucking way. And I'm like, I pull it out. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, don't tell anybody, Gunny. Don't tell anybody. Uh, so it was actually pretty fucking funny. And then I heard some giggling. And there was like 10 Marines. And their heads were stacked in the doorway because it was like a big giant open squad bay bathroom and they were all fucking dying. I think some dude had a fucking camera, but, uh, <laughs> well, what did I just walk into? So, yeah, I was the jokester, but like, dude, all Marines are fucking comedians. And I think military guys in general and girls, uh, are, uh, cause it's so boring and you get so much ample time to fucking waste your fucking life. And it's, high moments of fucking craziness and mostly moments of boredom and uh yeah so you just learn to fucking be like an amateur comedian and fuck around all the time so and i've always been that way too so uh yeah i like to fuck with people and i've done a lot more too so hope you like that story uh i actually could sit here and talk to you motherfuckers forever uh but i'm gonna get off um we're trying to keep this right around 30 minutes uh, so I appreciate everyone's fucking support. Um, and yeah, uh, we have a lot in store with this channel and just Patrick and I in general as a team, even outside of YouTube. So stick around. Uh, we got some big things fucking planned and I hope to do meet and greets and actually get like a fucking auditorium sized room filled up with our fans and fucking like a concert, you know, have a fucking metal band open up and fucking beer shooting off and flames and fireworks and midget strippers and fucking pit bulls and you know what I'm saying? Some fucking fun shit. So we like to create. So that's what we want to do. Have a blast. God bless you, pimp Sterling. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'll go fucking six more minutes. Patrick, six more. Two more minutes. Two more minutes. I'm going to keep it 36. Indigenous porcupine. Appreciate it. Whopper Jr. Nathaniel, did you ever run into... So yes, I don't even know what that is. I thought they'd be all retired after the Cold War. But my pastor, who was a Marine, told me... I don't even know what that is, dude, to be honest. 
Maybe I'm not a real Marine. I was eating crayons. Fuck yeah, crayons are goddamn good. The green ones. Now, I got a lot of combat footage. I do. Uh, and it's kept near and dear to my heart. I've got some Predator shit. And one day I'll fucking... Favorite UFC fighter. Oh, fuck. I mean, I've been hanging out with Tito a little bit. So, I'm, you know, I'm obviously going to say Tito. I mean, he was the fucking Huntington Beach bad boy. He was a goddamn legend back in the day. And he's a really good human being. He cares about this country a lot. Um, and veterans. Um, but you're right, favor. I got to take some shots with him in Pacific Beach back in the day. He's a sweetheart. Uh, uh, fuck, there's this Russian. Oh, I love Israel Sana. I love Israel Sana. Uh, Adna Sana, excuse me. Uh, I love that dude. He's the, the fucking last style bender. Uh, he's a cocky motherfucker, but that dude is lethal. Lethal. I love the dude. And then there's the, uh, I forgot his name, man. Sopovich, Mile. Uh, it's like a Russian sounding name. He's like Polish or some shit. Uh, he fought. I don't know. He fought. I forgot, uh, I forgot his name. It was this guy's last fight, the heavyweight fight. Uh, I forgot his name. Love that guy. Favorite band. I'm a fucking metal guy. Huge metal. So Ghost Iris, uh, fucking Attila from Atlanta, Georgia. And they got this little rap rock, rap metal gig called uh, Bone Crew. Uh, I love uh, Fit for an Autopsy, Whitechapel, Suicide Silence, Cannibal Corpse. Uh, fucking... Dude, I'm a big metal guy. Um, so, yeah, there's so many good ones. Metal is not dead. In fact, it's 100 times better now than it's ever been. It's technical as fuck. But I love rap. I love a lot of rap. I love hip-hop. Uh, I love folk. I love symphonic music. I love orchestral music. I play the French horn. Uh, so I like all music, to be honest, but mainly fucking metal. What breed is your dog? Both my dogs. I got a fucking blue-nosed pit bull and half husky, half... Uh, Look at him, boxer, half husky, half boxer. Parkway Drive, of course, I've actually seen them live. Uh, Australian band, and they surf a bodyboard. That's why I like them too. Scream, ah, it's as loud as I get. <laughs> Spets knots are fucking shit hot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I used to sing a lot, actually, um, but I've lost so much of my hearing, my tone's off. I can't hear myself. I'm like tone deaf, like. It's not that bad, but like it's it's bad enough to where I can hear it. So I would like to fix my ears and start singing again because I would be in a metal band right now if I could. Most embarrassing experience in Marsoc. Uh then I'll get off. Let's think, let's think. Most embarrassing moment in Marsoc. Uh, fuck. I would say it wasn't that big a deal, but I was pretty embarrassed. I was pretty new to the unit, uh, even though it was a brand new hey. time. Hey, shut the fuck up. Get out. Out. Get out. Uh, so we were shooting at the range all day, fucking rainy day like it is today here in uh, California. And we have our own little secret range within Camp Pendleton, real close to the Marshall headquarters there. And it's called Range 130. And... The fucking road's a dirt road, and there's a creek right next to it. Well, it had been raining so bad that the road started to collapse. And so I drove a lot of Humvees overseas. I was a driver in Generation Kill, so the invasion to Iraq. Uh, I, I grew up in Kansas. I had a Jeep and a truck. Like, I'm a fucking off-road dude. So I didn't have my Humvee, Humvee license for the United States in the government. So someone left a high-back Humvee, uh, and... I was like one of the last guys and one other dude and our senior enlisted dude was like, Hey, can someone take that back? And I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. And I got in the Humvee, started the bitch up. We we're the last ones to leave this range. And it's like five miles or four miles back, back where we need to go. Windy fucking twisty road, Camp Pendleton. I get real close to the edge. The road collapses. The Humvee falls almost into the Creek. It's caught on two, two of the left tires, the inside tires. And this fucking creek is swollen. Like we would have gone into it, we probably would have probably would have fucking drowned. Get out of here. And uh, fucking, we had to get a, a big dragon wagon, big vehicle to pull us out. Uh, and instead of doing paperwork and charging me, they made me do like fucking a thousand eight counts. And this was a senior recon gone Marsoc Marine by Sid Gruber. 
and uh, in front of everyone, basically, in front of our Bravo or Delta company, Hooch, I had to do a thousand eight counts. It took me all fucking day. My hands were fucking bleeding. It was on concrete. Uh, it was pretty embarrassing uh, to, to my ego, for sure. Um, coming, you know, I was a pretty salty dude, seeing a lot of combat at this point. And, you know, you think something's below you, but I made a stupid mistake. And, you know, you got to eat a humble piece of pie. So it made me, I disliked him at the time, but quickly after that, um, I had the utmost respect. He wasn't trying to burn me. They could have kicked me out of the unit. I could have killed my buddy or myself. Uh, so it, was, it was pretty embarrassing, to be honest, but I didn't get in trouble for it outside of getting thrashed. What happened to Generation Kill footage? Lost. Anyways, I got to get off, guys. Uh, about 10 minutes over. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for fucking being fans. It means a lot to me and a lot to Patrick. My loud ass dogs here. So don't be a stranger. Hit us up in comments. We got Instagram. Uh, trying to grow our Instagram. So we do a lot of cool posts on there. Make sure you're following us on there because we have a lot of stuff on there that we're not sharing on uh, on YouTube. So yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Really do. See y'all.